Well, welcome to Italo Mispronounced Adventures. My name's Alex, and welcome to Nordic Arctic Trip Round 3. New personal record, minus 38. The last few episodes I've been exploring Lofoten with Joe. I have no recollection of this place. But I've now dropped her off at the airport, so it's just me again for the next month. Minus 40 is still the main goal, and there's some cold weather coming, so let's get on with it. And now I'm driving, we're, we're heading east. Uh, that's where the cold weather is. We're going to this place here. Um, it was about minus 19 in Robin Yemi, where I've just left. It's now, I'm only probably about seven, eight miles outside, and it's now minus 27. So, uh, Fingers crossed, we might be able to find the minus 40 about 9 a.m. tomorrow. In the area I'm driving to, it's so it's meant to be into the low 30s, so we'll see. Temperature is dropping, minus 30. Minus 32, we're getting gold up. Minus 33. 34. So I found a park up for the night and I've been editing for a few hours and my water bottle's frozen. I just had my water bottle sitting on the floor and uh, well, it's frozen. I'm starting to freeze and it's currently minus 32.8 outside. It's currently almost one in the morning. The afterburner's time's wrong. 21 degrees in here. Currently minus 33 outside. Frosty. Minus 34.3. It's a chilly night last night. I mean, not in here, it's 21 degrees in here. Colton, I need to bring the power stations in and because if they're in the cab, they'll freeze. I mean, the cab is currently minus four, which is not cold. And the heat of vents went into here and blows on the power stations a bit to keep them warm. Put my slippers on. So, where are my keys? Oh. It's fresh in here. Right, let's have a look to see what the engine's doing. Minus 34, minus 30. Well, at least it means my oil is not frozen. So let's get the preheat done and get the engine started. Preheat it on. Minus 34 outside, it'll probably take half an hour to get it up to the engine temp. It's one of the coldest nights outside. Pumps going on the pre -heater. Come on. Don't hear an ignition whoosh just yet. Come on. Not starting just yet. Still pumping cold air. <sighs> Even the diesel heaters, exhaust gases condensate. Mm, still no life in the diesel heater, just pumping away. All right, problem solving to try and figure out what's going on. That is. That's going up when I'm turning heat on, so the glow plug is on and taking power, good. I put my hand outside and I can feel the fan of the unit blowing. I am noticing that maybe the 
pump is sounding a little tinnier than normal, so maybe the fuel is gelled up a little bit, even though it's Arctic diesel, I think it's got its limits. So maybe it's the diesel, the fuel is a little bit too cold, which I can fix, I get the heat gun and then just warm the line. Slight change in pitch, but no steam coming out yet. I don't think that's very light this time. Right, there's the engine preheater. So, fuel, diesel is pumping from the outer tank from the Y junction, so it might just be this bit of fuel I need to heat up slightly. And, heat gun. Well, as we can see, Cooling, for some reason it's dripping from that joint to that joint, which doesn't usually drip from there, but it's dripping, so the coolant is not uh, frozen, which is good. All right, let's just cycle it, put it back on again. Hard to see, but coolant is not frozen, I just had the lid off. All right, trying to start again. Let's get the heat gun on a bit more directly heating the fuel pump got a few coughs of combustion but then as soon as I took the heat away it stopped again almost so it's sketch of what I think is going on my main van fuel tank going to the engine and then the auxiliary port going off to a Y junction which then splits off into my Chinese heater and my engine preheater I think the Chinese heater has been running all night it's been continually pumping and the fuel's not gelled. I think because this is not been turned on, just the fuel in here is gelled up, uh, which is why when I use the heat gun on the pump, I get a few bits of combustion when it probably melts the fuel out and then, it, and then it gels up again. So this is flowing, this is not. And I think this, just because it was a far larger volume, hasn't gelled up because it's not lost its heat as quick as just two mil bore. So I need a better way to heat everything up. All right, my little backup, well, my backup heater is this, uh, well, Calgary all-in-one box. So I thought it'd be, and if I ever need to, they're just a normal Chinese diesel heater inside a box. So if I needed to swap my main one out, I could swap my main one out, or I can just uh, also use this as a portable one if need be. I think that is what am I about to do? So my plan, rig this up outside the van and just point five kilowatt of diesel heat into the uh, whole area under the van and hopefully get the heater and the fuel line warmer. Right, rigged up, pumping diesel. Hopefully this will uh, heat up just the under area of the van a bit when it's running at full tap. Right. Crew's going, diesel is pumping. Hopefully, exhaust and hot air will just get this place a little bit warmer. Inside, it's running off the anchor and on the power station, and my little diesel jerry can down there. So, give it five minutes, come back and have a look. Well, that's a bit inconvenient. The jerry can I had from the was still UK diesel, so it's uh, gelled up in the lines and stopped the heater from working. Might just give it one crank at minus 30 and just see what happens. Yeah, unsurprisingly, wasn't having any of that. Well, I might be stuck because the engine won't start, but, well, not the engine won't start because preheat won't start in minus 30, but I needed to go do a work consultation. So getting ready for my uh, Zoom meeting. And then we will get the van started and working. Right, so consultation done. Back to the reality of it's minus 31 outside and the preheater won't start. So back on that. As this is the second time on this trip, I've flattened my battery. Um, do need a new battery, so I might go buy one of those, but I'm just gonna add on my Anderson connector to those two points so I can then plug that in easily without having to faff around a lot. Sorted, upgrade made. Now if I plug that in, turn it on, 
should start hopefully charging my uh, starter battery. Right, it's starting to try and charge the starter battery. So leave it for 10 minutes and we'll see what happens. Well, let's give it a go. Okay, better than it was, so I think we've just got to leave it a bit longer. All right, cycle the glow plugs a few times. I wonder if the diesel's gelled in the engine. And to top it off, the engine preheater is not even attempting to start now. I think it's gone into its fault lockout mode because it had too many attempted failed starts. So I need to go figure out how to reset that. Oh, I can hear it. I can hear a preheater. Come on, come on, come on, please, oh it's warm air. All I did was just pull the fuse, leave it 10 seconds and then turn it back on again, which is the reset fault, but it's fired up. It's turned off. Okay, well, let's go try again. Okay, that has gone slightly up from 29, minus 29 to minus 26. So we are getting some slight amount of movement and heat. Come on. Getting there. A few more starts, and I think we'll have it. Come on, I know you want to. Well, it's making it's doing work. The cooling temperature's gone up from minus 29 to minus 11. It's starting to get there. It's still going, but it's not gone up to higher speeds. So I think it's going to cut out in a minute. But yeah, coolant is now minus seven. We're getting there. Right, longest attempt yet. It's still clicking away. Coolant's now minus four. Progress, I think. Oh, it's cranked up higher. I think that might have started. That's running, that's running at a high speed now. Excellent. That's running now, so tidy up the van, wait for the engine to get hot and then start it. Excellent. Yeah. Oops, today's it's my energy drink is in the progress process of um, opening it itself for me. Yeah, as I was speaking. Right, preheater has almost finished up because I can hear the pump slowing down. Battery's been on charge for a while now. Let's see what's going on in there. 
Come on. 51 degrees. Let's give it a go. Yes, there we go. Right, leave it for a while for the oil to uh, warm up a bit. And well, we'll figure out what I'm gonna do for the rest of the day. Right, put the DC to DC chargers back on. Normally they're on full, but if I was charging the start battery, I didn't want both the DC to DC chargers on. Oil's starting to slowly come up, so should be good to crack on. What have I learned? Well, I think the issue there was the cold, the diesel gelled up. Clearly, if the diesel's still moving, it's fine because the and the diesel air heater in the back and the preheater are on a Y junction, so there's still fuel coming out of the diesel tank. So just probably kept the uh, engine preheater on and it would have just gone on it, cycled thermostat overnight. But we're getting there. I might consider getting a new starter battery though. I think this might be the original one for the fan, the van, which is five years old now, because I should just be able to cold start it in minus 20. Yeah, it should take a little minus 30. It should take a long time. like a while to get it actually going, but I shouldn't have to wait that long for the um, starter to charge up. Reason for the UK diesels, I kind of wanted to show what UK diesel did in the extreme cold and why you swapped to the Nordic diesel. I just had to bring some UK diesel in my jerry can to do that. I just hadn't swapped it out yet, but I've now decanted it into a Coke bottle and you can sort of see, well, where it's been warmed at the top, it's going transparent and at the bottom, it's quite cloudy. And that's been inside for a couple of hours. I might keep this bottle, two litre bottle, and then one of the nights, if it's really cold again, leave it outside and sort of show UK diesel at minus 30. But I think part of my issue is even the winter grade diesel wasn't enough for last night, or at least minus 35, 36, when there is diesel sitting in a two mil bore pipe, they're very susceptible to getting very cold very quickly. Whilst the stuff all moving out of the main fuel tank uh, for the diesel air heater has been absolutely fine. Right, that definitely is one of the reasons having a large battery bank is helpful when needed as a contingency. Did all my normal stuff last night, the engine's now charging, I got down to about 60 odd percent. It wouldn't have been too much of an issue for me to, if I was really stuck to get away with maybe being a bit more conservative in my power use, but having that, the main diesel air heater running all night again and trying again the following day. So having the ability to charge, having a large battery capacity bank and having options so like having a power station as a backup solution is just so important for fixing stuff by yourself up here. I mean, sure, I could have just called the uh, my RAC European cover and someone local would have come out and helped start the van, but I like to be able to do it myself or learn from my mistakes. So you don't have to. Well, time to move off then. So I'm gonna to drive to Sailor S-A-L-L-A, -L -L -A, which is eight miles from here. And on the website I use, which logs all the last, I think top 20 coldest places in Europe over the last 24 hours. They were the coldest last night at 37.3. And I'm eight miles from there, which is why I was there. I wanted to hit the minus 40. So they didn't get the minus 40, but the van didn't, which is pretty good because the van didn't do very well as we've seen from today. Well, the van did fine. I need a new starter battery. And mine is knackered, but Everything's charging and running, so let's crack on. This is quite interesting to see. Where is it? I've got a small oil leak, and I have for a while. Here's my oil leaks. There's my oil, which leaks. Right, we can take it a bit slow moving off. Whilst the engine is heated and the engine oil is hot, the differential, the gearbox, all of those things are still cold. So move off nice and slow-ish to um, just get those all sort of warmed up from friction really. Well, since everyone else is leaving their vehicles just running in the car park, though yes he's there with the keys and the ignition running. Pop to the shops, do my recycling.
Well, with that storage temperature and uh, operational temperature, it was minus 36 or 37 last night, so that might be why my diesel heater pump wasn't too happy. This clip is actually from the future when I got back to Rum and Yemi later in the trip. Well, that might be why I had issues with the diesel I filled up with the other day. After filling up with fuel, I carried on into the darkness to find a park up for the night and slightly misjudged a corner in the car park. Well, nice gentleman helped me uh, dig the van out. I, I got it stuck, proper stuck. Well, I was getting there, rocking it back and forth. But yeah, turned into the, there a little bit too early and put my rear wheel into the soft stuff. And I was rocking it back and forth. I'd made about a meter back, but. That is definitely one of the cases where, I'm going to sound like an idiot, what is it? Limited, is it limited slip diff? Correct me on the terminology. I think for the transit you can get a limited slip diff. Uh, because I had one basically buried in the snow and one on the compact snow, the one on the compact snow was spinning. There's less friction in it, the one which was buried. Anyway, and a winch, that'd be nice, because I could just pull myself forwards. Uh, with one of those trees and it'll be all right, but oh well, things to learn. Well, since today's been a wholly unsuccessful day of not sorting the van for four hours and getting stuck, well, I just wanted to pop into this visitor centre to have a look. I might ask this hotel if I can stay in the car park, eat in the restaurant and have some expensive pints. I quite like the idea of that. Much needed. Well, lovely reindeer bacon and peach pizza. And the staff and I, one of the staff came out when I buried the van in the ditch and got stuck. Checked me, then when I was in there, she asked me about um, what I was up to because she noticed I had a British number plate. And then came and chatted to me about YouTube for a little bit, which was quite nice. So, quite lovely. And she was also telling me about last night was the coldest point in Finland was right here so head back to the van and probably go to bed it's not as cold um, tonight at all it's like minus 27 tonight so there should be no recurring issues with the uh, diesel gelling oops I didn't mean to leave that door open excellent to add to today there's now a comms fault. This though has occurred a couple times already and it's a, there's a loose cable in the original wiring harness. There we go, I just didn't unplug it, it just moved the cable slightly and it's rebooted the afterburner. Or not, it's turned off. Right, fiddle with the cable again. Now it seems to be rebooting. Excellent, that's what I need. Although part of me wonders if it's actually that or it's um, that cable's still loose so it's not reading it correctly. Not ideal. And then I just knocked off my beer uh, all over the floor. Excellent, I'm now mopping up a full can of spilt beer when the floor will cause it to freeze and the heater's now shut down and it's telling me there is a body sense of failure. Today is not my day. Right, fiddled with the cable some more. It's rebooting, showing no error, so I think it was a loose connection opposed to the actual sense of failing. Hopefully that starts now. Right, all might be well the world. Heat is running, floor is drying out. Van smells like a brewery. Good job I like breweries. And there's maybe a third of this full can left. Now time to get on with some editing. And well, but I think yeah, there's four terrible things which happened today. Hopefully, um, that's the last, but the night is still young. It's only nine o'clock. Right, following morning. Minus, I don't know, minus what? Minus 20 out overnight. So engine brake heater started, no problem today. It must have been the diesel gelled up in the lines or maybe a smidge of moisture or something or just the pump couldn't pump it or couldn't pump the liquid through. I don't know, I got it working yesterday. It's working fine today, started, no problem. The, uh, the beer I spilt last night, I left that on the... That's, um... Yeah, that's frozen. That's why I needed to mop it up before it, uh, before it froze as a liquid on the floor. 
Well, there's my bottle of UK diesel. And you can see where it's uh, settled from the cold last night and where it's normal at the top. Whilst there is a obviously cloudy where it's got colder, I think the orangey brown stuff in there might just be a contaminant um, as this was a Coke bottle before I uh, used it. And I don't know if I washed it out before I put diesel in it. Last night using it even wasn't that cold and you can see the effects of gelling of the really cold diesel is very slow in oh dear there it is I dropped it right preheaters finished oh. Oh, we got. minus 25 outside And check engine oil though, okay. Seventy one degrees. So it didn't sound like an amazing start, but we're on. The engine oil warning cleared in a few seconds. Let's go. pretty much the end of this episode if you've enjoyed what you've seen consider subscribing checking out the rest of season three or season one or two or even some of the other things they end up doing otherwise you can help support the channel look at some of the links in the description one of them is Roma who I now work for and do their electrical design consultations but they're a lithium battery company and I use their extreme series lithium batteries in this van I've got an affiliate link for them and I'm a brand ambassador for Autotem and their diesel heaters and water heaters Amazon linked and there's a few other bits and bobs so really I just want you guys to enjoy the content so thank you very much for joining me I'll see you next time cheers Bye.